Spider-Man, no more. Being Spider-Man has got to be one of the toughest, if not the toughest, role you could have as a superhero, right? I mean, you're broke. You're always suffering. People around you are always dying. You're always tired. You know, you're always late for stuff. It's tragic. It's hard. It's a, it's a hard knock life for Spider-Man. So obviously, you're going to give up the mantle every now and then. Take some time to yourself. But just how many times does that happen? That's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to show you every single time Spider-Man no more happened, right? The very first time it happens, right? This is Peter Parker, 616. Peter Parker is overwhelmed with his aunt's illness. He's struggling to keep it all together. On top of that, his grades are slipping in school and J. Jonah Jameson won't stop spearing Spider-Man's name in the public. Peter Parker's just fed up, throws out a suit and thus the first Spider-Man no more was born. The suit is actually given to J. Jonah Jameson from there. Peter Parker not being Spider-Man also doesn't last long either. Actually by the book's end, he becomes Spider-Man again. He's actually like sitting on J. Jonah Jameson's desk in the Spider-Man suit, but this one comic little did it know would spring to life so many homages and so many repeat offenders right miles morales is spider-man no more when venom and miles were battling in a hospital where rio miles's mom works venom thinks he's killed miles by ingesting him but miles breaks out the symbiote and boom goo explodes everywhere miles is like come on mom we gotta get out of here turns out miles's mom was struck fatally in the fight and she dies miles quits being spider-man for literally an entire year spider girl number 50 spider girl no more Spider Girl is going through it. I mean, her friends in the hospital, her dad was captured, other heroes are calling her a screw up. Kane is now getting in the mix, too. Things are just crazy for her, and it's really stressing May Day out. She fights Peter Parker's kidnappers and confronts Kane. She gets her father back and whatnot. When she makes it back to the hospital, her friend actually manages to wake up from her coma, and things are looking better, right? May Day runs out of the room. She sees Brad, the guy she's had a crush on since literally grade school. She kisses him in excitement, but something just feels wrong, right? All these emotions together leaves May feeling like maybe she's not cut out for responsibility of being Spider-Man. She puts the suit in the trash and just walks away. It literally doesn't last more than an issue though. There's no time gap or anything. She's just Spider-Man the next issue, but Spider-Girl no more. Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Man no more. In order to beat an alternate reality, Norman Osborn, who is Spider-Man, Superior Spider-Man makes a deal with the devil to return to being Doc Ock. He then fights and beats Norman, sends him back to his own reality. But after his deal with the devil, he's no longer Spider-Man. He doesn't have any of those memories anymore, and he puts his suit in the trash. He still has yet to return to the mantle, although a book is currently in the works for Superior Spider-Man to come out. Gwen Stacy's Spider-Man no more. After her powers were synthesized out of her, Gwen Stacy actually comes in contact with the symbiote that gives her all of her powers back. However, it's kind of like touch and go, you know? Sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. She asks Peter Parker for some help, he joins in, he says he's going to examine some of her blood and he'll determine what's happening. Gwen in the meantime was thinking maybe she should focus on some other stuff while she waits for Peter's results to come back. This is probably the only Spider-Man No More story that's even remotely positive because you know she, she keeps playing with the band, learning more music, has more time to herself. It's, it's a slightly positive one, you know. It's not like there's any real back-breaking moment that's caused her to quit being Spider-Man. But like this might be a little dangerous if I can't actually be Spider-Man while I'm trying this. Zombie Spider-Man No More is in an alternate universe where Zombie Plague hits the Marvel Universe. Zombie Spider-Man is going around the town. He's like killing the Sinister Six actually, and he still has some brain functionality. He then notices that the Sinister Six turned into zombies and they started eating his friends and he begins to lament what he is, saying he can't be a superhero if he's like this. Then this particular weird homage was born and he throws his skin in the trash can. I got two honorable mentions. We got Spider-Man 2, the movie. I don't really talk about other forms of media Spider-Man besides the comics on this channel, but I do think this one deserves to be talked about at least in a little bit because look, it's like a perfect homage from the original storyline, like simply perfect. Look at it, simply, just look at it. There's not a lot of things in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies that are comic accurate, but this one in 2AT is comic accurate. And then lastly, we got Scarlet Spider number 24. Kane attempts to quit being Scarlet Spider, and he tries to burn his suit in the trash can. Sadly, his suit is actually flame retardant, and it just wouldn't burn. So this one doesn't really count, but I had to throw it up there. 